Hello, hi, and welcome to Empathic Fire. I am your reader, Jay. These are going to be general messages for the sign of Taurus in mid-May 2020. What's going on, Taurus? How are you guys doing? I hope that you are doing well. All right, my friends, my Taurian buddies, my Taurian pals. Uh, once again, happy birthday to you guys. Uh, Mid-May, your season is wrapping up. You're about to pass that baton on to Gemini. Uh, but regardless of, you know, it being the end of your solar return, I hope you all had wonderful birthdays uh, when and where able you were. When and wherever, thank you, <laughs> you were able to celebrate them. Uh, I understand, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Since Pisces season, things have been shut down. Pisces was shut down for the most part. Aries, now Taurus, and it looks like Gemini might be a little shut down too as far as being able to go out and celebrate since we're still dealing with this pandemic uh, in, in, in much of the country where I live, which is in the United States. Uh, maybe where you are, it's a little less uh, restricted at this time, but hopefully uh, whenever you guys were able to celebrate, again, I hope you had a good time. Uh, if you've been with my channel for a while, you know my favorite dessert is ice cream and cake. So if you were able to indulge in a little bit of that, cool, cool, cool. But if that's not your bag and you know, <laughs> or you just weren't able to get out there, I still hope and I'm wishing you well uh, as you celebrate your your dear old solar return, my friends. Now, other general announcements before we get started with your reading today. Uh, Taurus, uh, I did uh, read for you guys for your birthday season and I did do a live for you guys. If you didn't see that, check it out in your playlist, the Taurus 2020 playlist. Both of those videos will be there. Um, but I'm also thinking of maybe eventually kind of, sort of, kind of, randomly jumping on uh, the channel here and doing lives for all signs, uh, live readings. So uh, if you're not subscribed already, I would suggest subscribing so you can be notified of that. I think I'm going to do it sometime in May or June, so be on the lookout for that if you're interested. And other than that, I've been telling the other signs, well, you're the fourth sign I'm doing in this series, but I told all the others, like, I've been guided very recently to like really encourage people to be optimistic about their situation and their circumstances to keep themselves as much as they can on a high vibe or a neutral vibe level. You know, there's a lot of negative attitudes and opinions or, or, or mindsets and just sort of negative or low vibe things in the ether right now. Um, and so I just feel really compelled to encourage people to try as best as they can not to fall victim to that or, or get too heavily involved with people or, or attitudes or mindsets that bring them down. You know what I mean? In the time of a crisis, in the time of all this uncertainty, it doesn't help to feed into that energy or allow it to persist around you. So as much as you can, protect yourselves as much as you can, stay in a high vibration, all right? All right, so let's get into it. Hello, friends. <laughs> uh, I haven't shuffled off camera. Oh, I meditated off camera and shuffled a little bit, to be fair. But uh, what we're going to do now is you're going to see that the uh, timestamp is in the description box before we get started. If you guys want to jump ahead, that's totally why it's down there. So go ahead and click it if you want to. Also, in the description box, you will see the information you need if you want to get a personal reading with me. Uh, if you have a question before you place a personal reading with place an order for a personal with me, uh, feel free to email me at the same address and I'll answer you just the same or as soon as I can, rather. <laughs> And uh, also down there, you're going to see the link to the Instagram that I started a while ago. Uh, so if you want to follow me over there, I'm posting mm, just about every day, every other day, something like that, uh, <laughs> Oracle cards, and I'm interpreting them over there. And that name is Empathic Fire Tarot. It'll appear here if you missed it in the opening. And if you want to drop me a follow over there, that would be super, super cool, okay? If you don't, that's also cool. I don't pressure people either way, you know? Uh, anything else? Oh. For those who are unfamiliar, this is going to sort of mimic the style in which I read personals. It's a le little less structured than my monthly readings, but the uh, the message will still be general, okay? So take it with a grain of salt, take what resonates, leave the rest that doesn't, okay? All right, finally, let's do it. <laughs> and for some reason, my eyebrows started to itch just now, which is strange. I don't know what that's about. I've, I don't ever recall in my life having my eyebrows itch so much like that. That was very strange. What is this? Come on. That's so weird. The thing, you know, <laughs> I was saying in the live uh, that I did for Tauruses, let me go ahead and get into this. So Taurus uh, messages and energies, please, uh, for Taurus in mid-May. But uh, I was saying to you guys uh, that were that showed up in the live, and you can look at that video. I'm not, I don't usually cross promote myself, but in that video, that I did for Taurus's live, like my neck was being creaked a lot and my, my body was affected. I think I got like a itch on my hand or something like that. When I do things for Tauruses, my body gets affected. So I'm wondering if like one of my guides is a Taurus or was a Taurus or whatever you, however you would talk about 
a guide in their astrological makeup, you know. <laughs> but anyway, let's get into it. Taurus, please, for mid-May. Messages and energies for Taurus in mid-May 2020. Messages and energies most pertinent to Taurus at this time, please. Ooh, they like that. That's good. See, and now my elbow. What the hell? Oh. <sighs> <laughs> messages and energies for Taurus at this time please show me one what is going on with you guys Taurus is mess with my physical body that's so interesting maybe I should look at like where Taurus placements are on my chart nine of cups reversed and the queen of cups so let's see what that one was that came face down eight of swords yucky Yucky, yucky, yucky. All right, Taurus, here we go. Eight of Swords to start. Nine of Cups reverse after that. And then the Queen of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces vibes. Could be dealing with a water sign, but you don't have to be. In general, it feels like a little bit of a love loss situation, if not a love loss. Um, it feels like a love scorned or a love disintegrated, a love that was forgotten. Uh, this eight of swords, see, there's two people on this card, which is very untraditional for the eight of swords. Usually it's just one person and they're sort of enraptured or imprisoned in the eight of swords. But here we have two people. And I feel like maybe you've had like a cold standoff, like a cold shoulder between you and another person maybe there was a lack of communication or at this time you're dealing with a lack of communication with another person um it could be a, a matter of the heart it could be you know a love situation but it doesn't have to be you know so if this is a you know bad blood between you and a friend or a family member if that applies go ahead and take it but you know regardless of the type of relationship it, it just feels like a mutual standoff or a mutual cold shoulder that you are experiencing with another person and I you know contextually I can feel there's a lot of history in that you know for most of you it's not like some overnight thing that just happened it was like building to this disintegrating like I said before this this dis dissolving of a relationship there is a dissolving of a connection between you and another person and it leaves both people to their own uh, personal extent feeling exhausted or feeling um saddened or feeling like irreparable damage is another thing i'm getting like i feel as though in in many of your cases Taurus, it feels like you and this person have mutually turned away from each other and you both feel like that's it like there's no coming back from this there's no recovery here there's no chance of coming back to a mutual meeting ground with one another that's very interesting it could be just a perception it could just be how you're feeling in this moment because eight of swords is this uh a card that represents mental torment or mental blockages you know you're not able to see past what you perceive in front of you in this moment so for now that's how it looks or how it feels it's how I did turn that down. Okay. I just, that was pretty loud. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's not super friendly or copacetic, this eight of swords. I'm not, I'm not sensing like, you know, ex explosive arguments. Maybe that applies for a few of you, but ultimately I'm just feeling like two people just are not on the same page. They're not able to communicate to each other clearly. And because of these blockages that they both possess, both people in this card possess these possess the blockages, right? They're experiencing the blockages in some type of way. I feel as though there's like no, it's like an impasse. You're at an impasse, okay? So then the next one that you have, right? Yes, Nine of Cups in reverse. Show you this card upright so you can get used to it. I don't really use this deck as much as I used to. Um, so look at that. Like that's some like really tender energy. Like this is very like, cute yeah I'll use the word cute it's cute it's like very effusive it's very tender it's very nurturing this nine of cups and again two people these two cards eight of swords and the nine of cups in traditional tarot if you're familiar usually shows just one person but in this particular deck which you know my guides told me to pick for you we see two people so there is some type of connection again it doesn't have to be romantic it can be platonic 
uh, between you and another person where, <clears throat> pardon me, it used to be like this, very affectionate. It used to be like a meeting of the minds or you guys, you know, saw each other so clearly and you understood each other so clearly and used to get along like bosom buddies, like best of friends, you know, dare I say soulmates. And if you've been with my channel for a while, my friends, you know, I don't use that word often, but that connection between you and this other person, that's what it felt like. Like you completed each other. And that's another concept that I would challenge on my channel. But you know, some of you think in those terms, so I'll allow it. But this Nine of Cups has come in reverse. So there's a draining out or a tipping over of that feeling. It is lost. Uh, Nine of Cups in traditional tarot interpretations talks about a wish fulfillment, right? Um, it talks about, you know, your deepest, <laughs> deepest, deepest desires and wishes when it comes to personal fulfillment. What's going to make me happy? What's going to put a smile on my face? What's going to bring me joy? And for many of you, it was some particular partnership. You were wishing to meet your soulmate, if that's your whole story. You were wishing to have or continue to have a close relationship with your best friend since childhood. You were wanting to be close with your relatives, with your child, with your parent, with your with your cousin, whatever. You guys have been, you know, so great for the majority of your life spent with this person, but then something has happened. And we're going to clarify it because I feel that these contextually talk to each other. We're going to clarify that in a minute. Something has happened where this has just been yanked out from under your feet. That's how some of you are feeling about this. Like it just out of nowhere, overnight changed all of a sudden. All of a sudden, how you felt about them or how they felt about you or mutually how you felt about each other, the, the prospect of being the wish fulfillment or feeling that your wishes were granted because you, you were working with the universe, praying to your God, doing whatever. And now it's like gone. It's absolutely, it feels absolutely gone. It feels, dare I say, executed. Something like that. Queen of Cups, final part of your first, uh, I guess your first spread, we'll call it. But uh, this Queen of Cups character, again, Cancer Scorpio Pisces vibes. They don't have to be a water sign and it doesn't have to be a female. But here we see someone who I think would be I feel like this is someone possibly a friend to you, possibly uh an advisor to you, just just a shoulder to cry on or I don't think this is either you or the other person in the situation where the love was lost and there's some type of impasse going on. I really don't think this person is a part of that. If they are, you would know that already. Um but I feel that there's this person that comes in with compassion, with care and concern about you, Taurus, and wants to help mend your broken heart. Now, again, if this is like a romantic thing, I don't think this is someone swooping in trying to, you know, take you on a date. I don't think, no, I think this is like literally someone who will listen to you, who will be patient with you, who will understand your experience. Like this person is like super sympathetic towards the situation in general, but particularly towards you, Taurus, or whoever this is resonating with, because again, it is a general, it can go vice versa. So here comes the sympathetic ear, who's really just here to lend a helping hand. I don't see that this person wants anything from you or wants to get things going in a particular way that would serve them. This is not a selfish person, basically. This person comes to you and says, hey, do you need to talk? And they don't want you to talk because they want to grind, you know, their act. They might, you know, this might be a mutual friend. Like if this was a fallout between a group, uh, a, a few peoples in a group of friends, this isn't someone who wants to hear you badmouth the person who has hurt you so that they can say, oh, girl, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Or, oh, my God, dude, I understand. I absolutely know what's going on. You know, this isn't that person. This person literally is like, so tell me more. Tell me what's going on. Get your feelings out express them to me because I can offer you something in exchange. Like this person is really just here to help. That's very rare. Well, I shouldn't say it's very rare, but it's very interesting that that's how that person is reading to me. Like they are just literally, I'm just here to help. I don't want anything in return. I don't aim to gain anything by having these conversations with you. There's like no, there's nothing they're getting out of this situation by being here and helping you. So that's, that's good. That's a good friend. That's a good person to have on your side in the middle of whatever the hell this is. So let's clarify this. Why is the Eight of Swords here? 
Why is the Eight of Swords here? What is this mental torment between these two people? What is going on with this Eight of Swords? Why is the Eight of Swords here? Mm -mm, no. Why is the Eight of Swords here? Please show me. Mm. Why is the Eight of Swords here? Seven of Swords. Lies, deceit, deception. Why is the Eight of Swords here? Possibly somebody acted like they were on their own. They acted in their own interest. Yeah, selfish. They were selfish. Why is the Eight of Swords here? Ten of Cups. Mmm. Definitely. Come on. <laughs> I cut my nails a couple days ago and I can't pick up cards. There we go. <laughs> anyway. Um, Seven of Swords and the Ten of Cups. Clarifying that Eight of Swords. So, Seven of Swords, lies, deceit, manipulation. Someone acts in their own best interest without a care in the world about how it affects someone else or other people in the situation. They walk away. As you see the woman with the cape, she's walking away in the middle of the night. So that could indicate that someone turned their back on you in your darkest hour. Um, I'm really getting, I mean, for some of you, this is going to be a romantic situation and you already know that. But for many of you, this is like friends and family. This is like, you know, people that you knew for a long time who you thought would always have your back, they actually turned away and showed you their back. They showed you how they would care for you when all the chips were down. Like all the, st all the swords being staked in the ground there. Like s when you were out of ideas, when you were out of solutions, when you had no one else to turn to, this person wasn't in your corner. And that is really shocking to you because contextually what you had with them was the Ten of Cups. Now, Ten of Cups is like this happily ever after dreams do come true type of energy when we talk about it in tarot. So it can, to some of you, speak to that romantic relationship. But I'm really feeling like a friend, a family member, a, a long-term uh, friendship, like from childhood, like you have known this person forever. And just when you thought you would have some semblance of security with this person that you could depend on them they turned away from you or you or you from them Taurus you know take your pick if you're watching a tarot reading and you know you were dastardly towards someone else go ahead and own that shit okay but what once was this beautiful picturesque type of connection with someone it's gone it's absolutely gone and someone may have lied when they didn't need to lie or they may have acted selfishly when they didn't need to act selfishly. You know, the Seven of Swords is a conscious choice. Well, I shouldn't say it. Well, okay. <laughs> They're like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For some people, it's a conscious choice. Like someone literally knew when I do this move towards Taurus, when I tell them this, when I show this side of myself, I am consciously deciding to show that I'm not a confidant of them, that I'm not someone who can be depended on. And they knew that. And they knew it would be read that way. They knew they would be read as a liar, as a cheater, as a manipulator, as someone who abandoned someone else in the time of need, right? They knew they would do that. And they, and they might not agree with the assessment, but they knew that's how they would be perceived, right? In other cases, this is like subconscious things where someone sabotages things possibly repetitively through the time that you've known them. Maybe you did have some good times together, 10 of cups, nine of cups in reverse. There were fond memories between the two of you, but ultimately they always come back to this acting in their own best interest and being super selfish and walking off and, and sort of abandoning their post or abandoning other people when they need them the most, right? So I get the sense of somebody who you know, it, you know, take your pick. It's a general. So some of you are dealing with people who consciously did it, knowing they would get a bad rap, knowing they would get flack for it and ultimately doing it despite that. And other people, they do it subconsciously in a saboteur type of way, in an indirect way of, you know, shooting themselves in the foot or, you know, <laughs> screwing up the situation between the pair of you. And it feels habitual for those where it's like habitual like this is what this is like the straw that's breaking the camel's back. There's something about this time around that it's just not acceptable. And it's really bummed you and this person out mutually, but because you're not facing each other, you're not talking to each other, you're not communicating, I don't think that you guys are aware of how much you both are lamenting and feeling sorrowful over the ending 
of this relationship. And maybe not ending, because, you know, who knows? This is just a moment in time. But at this time, it feels very final. It feels very like, boop, like you walk away from each other. Will you come back together? Who knows? But in this moment, it feels like you're not. And I'm saying, from your standpoint, from their standpoint, I think you both feel like, damn, I guess that's it. I guess that's the end. I guess it never meant what I thought it meant. Stuff, stuff like that. Like you're pondering. Eight of Swords, you're pondering. What does this mean? Why did it happen this way? Was I wrong? Were they wrong? Should I have said this? Should they have said that? And it's just like this thing that plays over and over in your mind. The argument, the ending, the, the silence, the ghosting, whatever the hell it is. And in the meantime, you've got someone who's trying to help you or is at least available for you to discuss your feelings with. But I'm not sure that you really want to do that at this point. Who knows? So let's see what else there is. Uh, final message for Taurus, and then we'll jump over and get you an Oracle card before we close out. So any final messages for Taurus regarding the situation at this time? Any final messages for Taurus at this time regarding the situation? Please show me. The devil. All right. You might be dealing with a Capricorn. Major Arcana for Capricorn is the devil card. Um, but what I immediately got was addiction and, and troubles with that. Troubles with people being addicted to things. Now, when we use addictions, we're usually thinking of drugs, illicit substances, alcohol, sex addiction, food addiction, things like that. Things that you consume. There are other ways to be addicted to things, right? You can be uh, addicted to fame. You can be addicted to power. You can be addicted to sex. You know, I mean, I guess you consume sex or, you know, it, it, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, I just get the sense of someone is very in, interested in being enraptured in an experience is that experience getting high or being drunk or being inebriated sure is that experience being physically intimate with other people and you know having this no strings attached you know hit back situation side biscuit side biscuit situations and if this has like been a cheating scenario for some of you sure other people they want to be enraptured in feeling bad actually of feeling bad and you're like what yeah feeling bad remember i told you somebody self-sabotages things because the ten of cups came right next to that seven of swords and the nine of cups was here but it's in the reverse there was happiness here but the thing about the devil card is worthiness sometimes it can really mess with a person's head when they feel unworthy of good things so they get addicted to and feel accustomed to experiencing bad things AKA, they don't feel worthy of good things. So you may have treated this person so nicely and you may have been there for them or them for you. Again, it can go vice versa. So take your side. You know where you are in the story, okay? And that can make someone feel inadequate, insecure. And so what must they do? They must treat you like a piece of shit. They got to be mean to you. They've got to reject you or they've got to reject themselves in this situation. You know, that's another way that... You know, it doesn't have to be so adversal, adversarial. It doesn't have to be they attack you and they, and they demean you. They can demean themselves. You could go to this person and say, hey, person that I care about so much, that I love so much, I think you're amazing. I think you're the bee's knees. Oh, my God, I want to I spend all my time with you. I want to create beautiful things with you in this life. We should be going on adventures together. And this person is just like, nah, I'm not worth it. You should just go on and find somebody else to be friends with. Go, you should find somebody else to date. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm the worst at this. I'm the worst at that. And they shit on themselves and they shit on themselves and they shit on themselves. Yeah. Deprecating. They, they, they are self-deprecating. Right. This has been coming up in a lot of readings and it's a retrograde. There's like massive retrogrades going on. There's a Venus retrograde, Jupiter and Saturn. Mm -hmm. Devil card, Capricorn energy tied to Saturn. Worth, worthiness. Hmm being deemed <laughs> acceptable, basically, you know, Capricorn and Saturn can be quite, uh, <laughs> fatalistic energies, let's say. They can be very, you know, black or white, Capricorns in general. Not all, 
and, and I don't want to say that you're strictly dealing with a Capricorn, but the devil card is here. That means Capricorn energy and that means Saturn energy. And it can be very black or white, pass or fail, yes or no. Yeah, there isn't usually a lot of gray area when you deal with these energies. And so I'm thinking that somebody has sort of that mindset about themselves or about you or about the situation or about life in general. You know, this could have been a very blissful situation and then you hit a rough spot. And as soon as you hit a rough spot in many dating situations, particularly, you hit one rough spot and that's an, that's enough for a person to hit the eject button and they're out. And you're like, what? We've been going good for like five months. Nothing happened. This was our first fight. And now they're done. So in some cases, it's a knee-jerk reaction because it's a protective energy. The devil, in terms of tarot, and I guess if you want to, well, <laughs> in terms of tarot, can indicate coping mechanisms. And sometimes, you know, we use coping mechanisms as a term to usually indicate something that isn't necessarily healthy or rational. And that's kind of ironic because Capricorn and Saturn aim to be rational. But if you do it in the low vibe way, it becomes ir irrational, right? So you're dealing with a complex person, emotionally speaking, lots of cups, mentally as well, okay? There's a complexity to whoever you're dealing with, and I think that they have their own demons to face, their own shortcomings to deal with. And you might not have been the person or equipped enough or anything to help them with this if they want help. Some of them don't even think there is a problem. Some of them think, oh, this ended between me and Taurus. We're not friends anymore. We don't speak anymore. I mean, it was good. We were dating for like eight months, but then all of a sudden we had a little bit of a fight. And I think I, I don't fight with people, period. And they're out. And, like, and that's the mm. <laughs> devil energy in general in tarot can be that, can um, rationalize things, can make things plausible because it satisfies a certain archetype or it satisfies a certain vision of themselves. Look at that devil dressed in a sharp suit, trying to make that very cryptic and, you know, creepy look seem okay. I'm wearing a sharp suit. I can't be the bad guy. Not to say that there is a good or a bad guy here, but like that's kind of what this person thinks. Oh, because I don't tolerate disagreements because I don't, like, just as an example, I don't tolerate disagreements in a relationship. I don't tolerate arguments or I don't tolerate arguing about certain things, right? This person could be very limited in what they are willing to argue about. If this was an argument about maybe their use of drugs, maybe they're not an addict, but maybe they're very recreational and you're kind of like, listen, maybe we shouldn't party as much or maybe you should stop partying and they're like no okay bye and that's it you see so they're taking this high road thinking that they're living within their boundaries that they've accepted for themselves where they won't be challenged is that healthy according to them it is because some of them don't view that they did anything wrong so that's up for you to to reinterpret and apply to your life taurus let's jump over and get you an oracle card and then we're going to wrap up your reading today. Let's see. Oracle message for Taurus. Please show me. So many decks to choose from. Which one will you get? Oracle message for Taurus today. Please show me. Ooh. Dark mirror. Kind of appropriate. Considering what we were just talking about. All right. Oracle message for Taurus at this time, please. An oracle message regarding this situation that can help them going forward. Oracle message for Taurus, please show me. And I think that this book, yeah, I'm pretty sure. This book uh, was not written in English. So some of the uh, translations of the uh, interpretations of these cards, I'm just like, hmm. This has been translated, but possibly not that well. So I'll try my best to reinterpret if we need to. Oracle message for Taurus. And there's nothing wrong, obviously, with other languages and tarot decks being published in other languages. <laughs> English is not a superior language. Not at all. <laughs> As a native speaker, I can tell you. All right, let's see. We got... 
Colorless Angel, card number 10, for those interested in the numerology of it. And this deck uh, deals with moon phases, so if you guys follow the moon phases, this one is speaking to first quarter moon, okay? Apathy is a crowned king of nothingness and the shining queen of whatever. We can be Siegfried, the dragon-slaying hero, but not when he slays the dragon, nor when he is betrayed and dies, but when he is simply doing nothing. We can be Michael, the archangel, while he waits bored and motionless, and St. George, Saint George, surprised in a moment of stillness and nothingness. All the strong rivers can become a swamp when they reach the plains, and the most yummy food can become gummy after a couple of hours unattended on a table. There is a lot of darkness when we make the habit of going gray. We numb our senses with a fog of delays, and then we just get indifferent to the fog herself. I'm here, we whisper, and if by a very tiny chance someone notices and replies and asks who's there, we become shy and stay silent a little more. You cannot be saved unless you face the dragon, and the dragon hurts. Of course it does. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So, I think that's kind of speaking to the Eight of Swords energy that was out here in the beginning, and that Nine of Cups, because I, I, I think I said something about pouring out or draining out, and this is a colorless angel. Like, I'm sure many of you can, you know, envision that that angel, that that vision, used to be more bright and colorful, right? And what's that in the back? A horse, A horse's head or like a... I can't see if there are wings, but maybe it was like a Pegasus or something like that. Whatever. Um, so I get the sense that you are drained in this situation. Your emotions, your mental space, your heart space, like you're just like, ugh, about it. Like much like the, the card was saying in this apathetic energy regarding this relationship, regarding this connection with this person. In other aspects, I think you would be okay, Taurus, but specifically to this at this moment you're in this meh blah blah energy and that i think that will of course change uh, as time passes on i think your best bet is to utilize the person who's here to help you this could be a good friend this could be an advisor this could be a stranger who you just see on instagram posting like inspirational quotes every day whatever get in touch with this person if you are in need of being pulled out of the mud okay Taurus, that's your reading for mid, uh, I was going to say mid-April, excuse me, mid-May. Uh, if you liked it, the like button is down below. Go ahead and hit that for me. If you want to leave a comment, let me know how this resonates in your life. That'd be super cool. Please feel free, uh, feel free to share the video and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed, my friends, that'd be super, super cool. But again, no pressure. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I will be back soon, Taurus, to do your June messages and your mid-Junes. Like I said, I did your birthday messages uh, at the beginning of Taurus season. So if you didn't check that out, check out your playlist and uh, you can catch those uh, additional messages there. And if you want a personal with me, guys, that information is in the description box as well as the Instagram link. So check me out if you want to, and hopefully I'll see you sometime in the future, all right? Taurus, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Take care.